the fast rundown of the bands. Lucian Nautilus and Lulu have all been taken away by Gen G. Kasante, Maokai and Vi all removed by T1. First pick, Ari to come in here for Chovy. He's been absolutely destroying on that pick. There is Paze's signature. Uh, Aphelios, of course, it's Gumiushi's signature as well, but Paze has played double the amount of games on this champion than his second most played. It definitely feels like we're getting that split, though, with T1 again kind of going towards, hey, we want big, beefy front line with a hyper carry in the back line, at least having a bit of that range advantage as well. Or as you look across at Gen G, this seems to be more the style, right? Take the Ari, play for the strong mid jungle, and then see if you can have Paze pop off in the later portion. And after the Nidalee incident, that uh, Gen G had uh, with uh, being not unable to pick up a win. Um, maybe taking a uh, page out of Konami's book, going back to Wukong, if you watch the LCK, this is of course no surprise, Peanut was the one who prioritized this champion above basically everything else for the entirety of playoffs and even a large part of the splits. And even though the nerfs have come in, we saw yesterday that what the champ does well, which is mid to late game team fighting, is where Peanut excels and we'll go back to that now. Yeah, now I'm curious to see exactly what the ban phase is going to be like. I'm thinking you might try and get rid of things like, say, a Blitzcrank or a Thresher, because you want to try and take the Thresh here for carry, but not actually going to be the case. Malphite going to be taken off the board, so just making sure again that they can have uh, the better front line when it comes down to these fights. And I think if you're a Gen G fan, you're kind of okay with that, oh, because yeah. Doran has not been able to win on The Rock uh, since the playoffs began in the LCK. So. Kind of all right with it, but still going to stop that wombo combo from coming through. Now, Genji thinking about their couple of bands moving into this one, and there is Owners Nidalee. There are two different Nidalee players in this particular match, and there's one of them that's a bit scarier than the other. <laughs> yeah, I really like the uh, the respect paid towards Owner, and and with what we've seen right now, barring a you know mid Cyan flex and any going towards the support, which is still a possibility, it does look like T1 is following the path that we saw them take in the first series, where they're going in hard on 5v5 team fighting. The Annie, when it comes to the uh, engage power, really, really big as well. And now, Chronicler, we need to ask you the question, um, because it was, of course, T1's challenger roster that used the Scion in a very experimental way that their main roster is now employed as well. Is this suicide bot lane Scion a possibility? Because often it was used with things like Maokai, a little bit of extra setup, um, but I'm always terrified of that hey. prospect. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I do think that it's a strategy that works best when caught off guard, and Genji is 100% going to be ready for it. I mean, you've already got decent pushes there, uh, well there in the, for the Jinx in the bot lane, so I could easily see him shove in bot wave and immediately start to roam down. Oh, and with do, Poppy? So, yeah, I mean, this could, oh. be, this could genuinely be a big play for us. Well, we'll see how it does go as Genji need to round out their first game roster of champions. Pays, considering what he wants to collect, and it looks like it's going to be Doran and Delight that are going to be uh, picking up champions. Another carry for Doran would be really interesting. And this is assuming that the Scion is top lane. And this is a really, I really this, big yeah. moment because Doran is, of course, the one that has taken so many hits for Gen.G throughout the entire split. He was the guy who was like, ah, oh, R4 me, Cassante blinds. I'll deal with it. Him still being on carries, even against C1, is a really big signal and a sign that Gen.G feels very confident with what he's been able to do. And also, this is a fantastic option into that Suicide Scion strategy because what that needs is someone that doesn't push all that hard on that top side of the map. Gwen is not one of those champions. She can solo carry a game. So if you leave her alone for too long and she gets too far ahead, it is too dangerous. Yeah, I also just think with the moment with what T1 have drafted here, they just have a great response to Gen G, right? Like, when you look at the dive potential that you have for the Gwen, the Rakan, and then the Wukong, your Poppy gets so much value here. Now the time can shout it to try and keep the Jinx safe. I think as long as Gumiyushi gets out of the laning phase on Scathe, he should be in a relatively good spot to just have so much protection in these fights. And Gen G has a lot of comfort, and I think if they can keep the game messy, if they can find an early lead and run with it, they have a really good shot. But if this devolves into just straight up 5v5, one team smashing into the other, it's not gonna happen, right? With just Poppy and Cyan, it would be hard, but you have Karia on Kench as well. Yeah. Really tough ask. And I think a huge of this, amount of this relies on Peanut and Chovy, like trying to play through that strong yep. mid jungle, see if they can get onto Faker in the early stages, and then lean that aggression to bottling. Especially when you hit level six for the Rakan, like that dive potential in those early stages where you can even charm up both the time Kench and the Jinx can set up beautifully for that combo of the mid jungle. And it's also exactly what T1 have been playing so far. It's what they've shown. It's just a whole bunch of CC to allow this Jinx to get absolutely ridiculously powerful. And Gumiushi is 100% to see who's going to do it today. And here we are under the rift for game number one. Genji on your blue side, T1 on your red side. Pays. he's the one that picked up the Aphelios. Gumiushi was saying 
that he thinks he's the best in the world on that particular champion. And let's see whether he can take Pays down a peg here in game number one and try and maybe get his hands on it in game number two. Last time these two teams clashed, it was Genji walking away with a victory, but that was a final, remember? And now we're back in the upper bracket, and this is T1's territory. Before the finals hit, T1 do not lose. Want to highlight a couple of item choices. Pay's actually going uh, for the Doran's Blade here, right? Usually in this matchup, we see the uh, Felios go for Ghost uh, as opposed to Cleanse. That, of course, makes sense into uh, Faker playing the Annie. But him also looking for early aggression with this, because if he doesn't and the Cold just gets a stack up for free, is a pretty big departure, maybe also a sign of what is to come. Conqueror also adds to that. Maybe going to be looking for a lot of aggressive early game skirmishes as T1 invades. Yep. Genji with full information. Chobi over there gets that ward down, but it does get cleared it's, out. It's happening. Yep. Oh. I don't think Genji should be surprised. Of course, they already picked that Gwen. It's now we're going to go for the grand entrance. They're looking for Gumiushi. He already has to flash. Karrion now running for his life, but there are three men after him. He has to use his flash as well, and already Genji off to a great start. And as we mentioned, the Scion strat should not come as a surprise. And Doran says, guess what? It's not. Waits with the rest of his team, and they force early summoners from the bot lane. Yeah, you're still getting the red buff here taken on the bottom side, though. So still, you might be able to make some magic work. The fact, though, that you've taken so much of the health bar off of Gumi and Carrion, and even Doran just sticking around here, makes it so difficult now for you to really go for this. I mean, look where the wave is. You're not going to be able to make this dive happen. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Doran's still here, so... He's standing uh, guard! The top lane does not exist anymore. Uh, it's just in the bottom lane now. Uh, there's a mini one. It's a, it's a small little lane towards this brush, as we can see. Q comes through here as owner is just clearing out that Krog camp. Gumiushi does get that shove towards his turret. And let's see whether it's going to work out. Four versus three for T1. Zayas going to try and pick up turret aggro. Delight going to knock him up into the air. And it is going to be first blood going over to Pays. A one for one so far. And now Zayas is zombie mode. He's almost going to take down the Aphelios. He does fall. And that is a kill for Gumiushi once again. T1, one up in the trade. It's a disaster for Genji. The fact that you end up losing both of your bot laners and Doran doesn't really get to farm. Like, Zion will do fine, right? He's TP'd back to the top side, but he doesn't need a huge amount of farm. Doran missing out a lot on the top end. We'll catch some bot, but still really nice play from T1. And this is with Genji being fully aware, right? Also on a highlight, Zayus going for the Ruby Crystal first, which I imagine is just so he can tank, like, use the health to tank an extra turret shot uh, and stay alive for just a little bit longer by those couple of precious extra seconds for the rest of his team. And really, as you were saying, T1 coming out ahead, the only thing you really get here on the flip side is that Pace picks up the kill, which is nice, and Peanut gets some extra camps. Yeah, I mean, really nice job here on the dive. The fact that you get onto the light here immediately with Owner just going directly in on the knockup as well means he doesn't really get away. And I think at this stage, if you're Gen G, just try and back away. Like, it would have been nice to pick up Owner, but you're just walking into the waiting hands of that zombie, and he's more than happy to take that kill and set it up for T1. Yeah, the tower juggling was absolutely fantastic. Stepfast presence and the phase rush movement speed coming through from Owner there, allowing him to get out after going through with the wall bang. So really nicely done here for T1. Oh. And Owner is coming back for another one. There is the Abyssal Dive. Good battle dance to get Delight out of the way, of course, on his signature Rakan, as our Owner is just going to clear out some vision. And, and actually, because of the invades, um, Peanut doesn't end, uh, even end up being ahead, right? He wasn't able to take the Crux on top side. And even with Owner spending as much time as he did on the bot side dive, there still hasn't really been an opportunity for Gen G to try and strike back. Yeah, I will say, though, at least for when you look at that top side, Doran has done a really good job of now kind of keeping Zayas at bay. So he's got a nice little CS for himself in that top end. And again, I think the, the biggest point of contention is the fact that we've had so much focus on the side lanes that now I want to see this transition into the mid, see if we can get Peanut as Chovy's about to hit that level six, to see if he can pick off Faker and try and set up some of these plays to right the wrongs that have happened on this bottom side. Well, as we can see, gold not really showing too much difference between the two squads. Genji losing out in that bot dive, but with the Gwen being able to contain the Scion so effectively, we should be moving towards a mid game on pretty even footing. Dragon's going to be the next little question mark here as it does spawn in two seconds time. Cloud to start us off. No Cloud Souls for my first game, it's a bit sad. Is it? Yes. I don't know. I don't know it's if very it is. Sad. I don't know if it is, Cloud Atlas. Souls I think no, I'm on Cloud 9 that I get to cast with you, so that will oh. do. Oh. Thanks, <laughs> You're a sweetheart. Why haven't they put us on broadcast together before? His owner's coming in once again. Pays trying to do what he can, but he gets pushed back into the open arms of T1. And once again, he will go down. Kumiushi gets his second. 
Yeah, pays in the clouds as well, and appears as he goes down another one. A little bit unfortunate there that they could, couldn't quite spot out that T1 were coming bot side again, but this just seems to be the game plan now. Genji's bot side is not going well at all, and maybe not mid either. Yeah, Charm traded for a big old bear here as Trovi's going to back away. Faker winning out on that one, but does have to press his R button. Of course, hits level six a little bit before Trovi does. And right now, I think Genji's composition is to me somewhat reliant on finding a couple of good skirmishes around a dragon, around a herald, right? Trying to use the power, particularly when you hit six, but when you're already being uh, put behind this early on, it's gonna make it a lot harder. And I got a question for you, gentlemen. Is Annie actually just the hard counter to Trovi? Because you're putting an extra minion in his lane. <laughs> and that is going to distract him quite a lot. He does like minions. Atlas, Quite a lot. you and I both know Chovy is more than that now, okay? <laughs> Don't feed into these false narratives. Come on. I was actually going to say, I've been really impressed. Like, obviously, this isn't news for you guys, but how much Chovy has grown. Like, the fact he is roaming yeah. significantly more. Like, he's an absolute menace both in lane and out of lane. And it's made such a massive difference to Gen G. And especially when a player is so incredibly strong, to still see them even just improving on that is just nuts to see. Yep, that was his one point of contention. Of course, a bit of a meme is now Peanut is going to come forward. The good old uh, Wukong walk past strategy <laughs> as he does just make his way towards the bottom side river. And owner is taking this first dragon. Very happy Poppy so far here. Very nicely done by Faker there. Uh, doesn't even have to invest anything. And uh, Chovy's ult will be down. Means that there's no opportunity for contest here. Maybe if they get any, they can try and get something going. Not going to be the case now. And Owner has already had such an incredible impact on the map. Picks up a dragon now as well. Has that two successful gank. And all the while, Peanut has not been able to get anything going just yet. Yeah, and I like the idea from Peanut. Like, if you can blow a summoner spell from Faker there, right? Like. Dragon's gone. We already accept the bot lane is gone out of control. We're not going to be able to get that. But for Gen G, it's hey, maybe we can actually lean in towards a Rift Herald on the top side. We have push for Doran. If we can try and play through the mid jungle, we can make something happen. But unfortunately, not quite able to get anything. He will have just crested over to six. So maybe if they can get out and get vision on this uh, top side, they can make something work. But again, with Guma, Yushi, and Karia having so much bot, bot, bot lane push, they should be able to get the faster reset. And contesting vision for Gen G in that top side is going to be so difficult. Well, T1 getting a bit of a shot here. We'll see whether they can collect themselves a plate. Gumiyushi with that extra range might be able to do so. Carrier just standing in position. Doesn't have Devour just yet, but he's very, very close. Hey is just farming up as safely as possible. There goes that plate, so a bit more gold into the pockets of T1. But Doran starting off this Rift Herald, and it's a tale of two sides of the map here, gentlemen, because the Gwen is going to be a big problem for T1, but this bottom lane is already a big problem for Genji. Oh, oh no. He's coming in. Of course, Doran doesn't have Smite available. Peanut is making his way over, though, as Doran is going to try and turn it on to Oni here. Two versus two for now, but Faker's moving up. Chovy following him forward. Small 2v3 here as Doran's getting taken down so low. No miss to put down, no options, and Ona is going to take him out. They'll take a Rift Herald as well, and T1 off to a great start. This is a big turning point. And this was not the play for Doran. He immediately moves across, doesn't actually have the push in top lane, so Zayus gets thrown down, Faker gets the cut across quicker as well, and Doran ends up paying for it with a bash in the face from the shield and the Rift Herald going across to T1. And this is something that uh, the Poppy, most notably, makes the life of Doran so much harder, right? And similarly for Delight, as soon as Owner is in the play, you need to be 100% certain that you are the one that is playing it forward, because once you commit, there is absolutely no way of getting out. And the thing is, there's not really a position here for Gen.G to really fight. Like, you can see Faker has Chovy zoned off, so Chovy can't really get in. Doran overcommits into the pit to try and get onto Owner, and at that stage then, with the great knockback of Poppy, it's easy pickings for T1. Also no opportunity because he used this mist early, right? Otherwise, maybe at least you force a summoner from Faker who then needs to get on top of you. Wasn't the case. And right now, T1 with a composition that in a straight up 5v5 looks so threatening already ahead. And if Gen G can't try and find a way to leverage side lanes and get even more gold into Doran, I think they're really going to struggle. No, absolutely. This is exactly what T1 have been utilizing all tournament long. It's being able to make sure that Gumiyushi can very safely do a lot of damage while there is just a catastrophe being created by the rest of T1. And they can certainly play towards that game plan so far. 1.5k is the approximate lead. Genji can play side lanes very effectively with the composition that they have. Still a lot of teamfight power if they can get there. But it's just not quite working out so far in this game. And T1's road to victory so far is looking pretty clean. Yeah, especially in the fact now that you do have the Rift Herald, you can even put more resources into Gumiyushi, just accelerate him so far into the game. Owner is on the way, but you don't really have much support, so I don't think they can really dive here with Peanut in the vicinity as well. Yeah, 
Delight just hitting level 6 now, so the quickness will be available. Peanut now fighting Ona. Um, as he does get a heroic charge forward, Peanut going to have to uh, walk away from this one, but it looks like no full commitments being made. Just looking for another plate here for T1 on the top side. Operation Move Gumiyushi and Take All the Crockery is working out very, very well. Uh, and if we go back all the way to when these teams first played, because it was actually the first match of the LCK, this was basically what happened. T1 put an incredible amount of focus towards oh. Pace. Yeah, Faker moving very, very quickly towards this Gwen, who wanted to be immune, but she is most certainly not. And Faker is going to be able to pick that one up. Cool guys don't look at explosions, and Faker definitely is a pretty cool guy. Super Mega Death Rocket is going to delay Pace's back. He actually cancelled it himself to try and avoid it. And now he's going to pick up another wave. Chovy gets a plate for his trouble. The Faker is now moving in once again. Move speed, pretty high, but not going to be able to get on top of Chovy, who slinks his way out. And this is kind of just going from bad to worse for Genji. The fact that both side lanes now down two deaths, you don't really have control to match a lot of what the, the plays that T1 are making. And again, the, you've got Dragon in 30 seconds time. So owner about to move into the mid lane. He'll pop down the Rift Herald, guarantee that they get control over mid priority and can even move down. And look at Faker, he's got push and bot as well. So full control right now for T1. Uh, and with these side lane picks in particular, Doran snowballing looked like the only angle that Genji was really given after how the early game played out with the attention towards bot side, the gank mid not working out. But with T1 then shifting his attention towards him, Genji is just kind of left scrambling as it's getting low. That delight going in, does find the charm, but the devour is going to be utilized here from Carrier. A long cooldown, but is going to keep Gumiyoshi safe. Actually really big for the dragon fight though. The fact that you don't have that uh, that ultimate available is going to be very, very nice. And you can actually try and see if you can make some plays. The light held on to his ultimate. So I think Gen G, you can already see, might be looking to see if they can contest this a little bit with push and bot. And the reset now coming through for Pace with the Gale Force picked oh, up. Oh, that's big. Place. I was just about to talk about it. Because uh, Gen G, a couple of mythics are still missing, right? Rift Maker for Gwen, extremely important. Sunderer for Peanut, not quite there. But with this Gale Force on Pace, maybe they want to try and fight here nonetheless. Could be an opportunity. Doran does have the push on the bottom side as well. Faker dealing with that wave, but Genji has started off this dragon. T1, we're going to come through for the pincer as Faker is moving his way over as well. Pays looking for a flank angle on the Ophelios. An odd decision. We'll see how it does work out. Zayas in that front line trying to work things out. Doran puts down his miss now. T1 just patiently waiting that one out, but the quickness is huge on to three. They try to get forward, but immediately Peanut is booped out of the fight. Doran's still at full health, though. The Moonlight Vigil is going to get the flash out of Zayas and Genji have pushed T1 away. Those health bars not looking very healthy and the Super Mega Death Rocket goes wide. You still have the TP to come in from Chovy though. They can try and just rinse and repeat this. So Pei's gonna shove out mid and Genji, really good call here to take the fight with those ultimates down for T1. They have to play a little bit more careful. And even though the Rakan into Poppy is a matchup that obviously is gonna feel very hard. This is the champion when even when Delight was still on Breon, he was feared. This was banned against him a lot of times because the angles and engages that he was able to find were a really big part of what made that team work. Oh yeah, he was absolutely fantastic. His engage play just in general, but this is his signature pick by a large margin. Good to see, being able to find that incredible engage demonstrating that prowess. But T1 losing out on one Drake, not gonna be the end of the world, but let's check out the replay. And it starts off here with Doran drawing a lot of attention. Faker is looking for the flank. Uh, he's trying to fight with Chovy, but the moment the engage comes in, it looks really rough. And if you don't knock away that Wukong, this fight is done. And, and T1 might be routed, Fortunately, due to owner hitting it, they're still able to at least get away with their lives. Also, the fact that Kerry was just matching pace for so much of that fight was crucial, because with the Infernum going, if that's going across oh, yeah. every one of those low health bars, you're in a lot of trouble, but um, still, you can kind of see how important it is for these AD carries to be present in these fights. I think you could feel pace was like, you're standing behind the boys like, do I, do I go? Do I, do I flash? <laughs> how, um, how and he did it, which I think is a good call, because <laughs> he's playing into Annie. You need that summoner a lot. I think we're missing half of this grab. Um, the Mastercard no, that's correct. here. Uh, oh, okay. Um, never, there just isn't the other half. No. Um, never mind. So, uh, Gumiushi with a massive lead. Same to be said for Ona here as well, as they're looking to augment this with yet another Rift Herald. T1 collecting Shelly and Shirley this game. Let's see where she does go. And, and if there is a team in the LCK that has been known to come back from these typical deficits, it is definitely Gen G. 
Uh, and, and we saw in the previous fight as well that they were able to find kind of the angles, but with more and more gold getting into the top of the T1, there's going to be eventually a point where you can't outplay the amount of item advantage that the opposing team has. And that's the thing, I think Gen.G have been spectacular when you look at them and how good they are setting up for these fights, right? When you look at that Dragon fight, they get into the river early, they make sure they have the vision that opens up for Delight to get access to the back line away from owner with the steadfast presence. So I think that's going to be the big factor here is how well can Genji actually coordinate themselves on the map to set up prior to these objectives as the helicopter will just be a threat for Pays and he'll walk away. Yep, just wants to wave the hammer around a little bit. I like that. Bit excited. Sometimes you need to pop, you know, yeah. yell, get the excitement. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to get out of your system. Yeah. No, it's you scared them. <laughs> and you're not punished too much for it. Refund's a bit of the cooldown. It's absolutely fine. No worries at all. Has that one back available already as he's looking to clear out vision now. Chovy going to vacate the area as Faker continuing to get this pressure on. And I think the conversation about scaling for both of these team compositions is we do see a little bit of a kerfuffle between the Ari and Poppy, but not really too much to worry about. But, uh, oh, Carrier diving forward. Chovy, his ex-teammate, um, catching him unawares just a little, but he will be okay. Ultimate still at the ready, so no worries at all. But Shirley is going to get her skull into that outer turret on the top side of the map. And T1 are looking to get even more. Bottom side, there is going to be a turret traded. But T1 still in the lead when it comes to these structures. They'll get another charge as in goes Delight. And immediately, he's going to leave. Um, it wasn't voluntary. Uh, it was, in fact, Ona telling him that he needed to get out of the building. And this is one of the big things you can do when you have this Jinx with a lead, is just continue to push forward. You always win that push against the Aphelios, apart from when he has the Infernum Guns. So but at the moment, T1 just using that to full advantage. Rotate immediately towards top side. they rotate back to mid. The vision control littering that top side as they go. Yeah, I want to highlight as well, T1 also, of course, these two teams have matched so many times. The ward that just came down, the Scryers in that brush there, didn't actually end up spotting Peanut, but like they know how Gen.G works, right? Yeah. With this composition, with the light, with Peanut, you know they're going to be looking to try and get on top of Guma right from the get-go of a fight. But as long as you keep control of your vision angles, you play disciplines, and you make it hard for Genji to ever get that opportunity, particularly with the amount of map control you have right now, Genji is going to have to try and maybe find a pick in side lane, someone overextended, because otherwise they're going to be in a really rough position. And I think that's what Genji are trying to do. The fact that they end up changing the cross map there for, hey, we're going to try and get some vision down in this dragon area. It's a minute out, so at least you've already got a decent foundation that you can look for. Try and push out these waves and then drift into that bottom side, knowing that there isn't a huge amount in that bot lane to read spot you out, but uh, T1 also reset at a decent time, so might actually be a bit of a vision fight here for Delight. Well, Delight does have a few options as far as exiting the area, but Carrier still getting on top of it. There is a charm waiting on the other side of the rock, though, and uh, Trophy's going to make his presence known. T1 will back away for the moment, and we do need to take a, a little bit of time to talk about the fact that we get Mountain Rift here as well. Phenomenal for Poppy. They've created a lot more corridors for a few of these picks to happen, and not only are T1 happy about it, but Genji have a lot of tools to utilize these narrow chokes with the uh, composition that they have with things like the Wukong, things like the Rakan, if you are ever grouped up as either team, it can become very, very dangerous. And what's important to note as well, even though there is a lead, 41 is Delight, again, look at this, trying to go for another flank angle, um, it's still very close, right? Like, K yeah. and a half doesn't mean that much in the grand scheme of things. And I think the, the scaling does ebb and flow a lot in this game. Right now, it's aiming towards T1, but the ultra late game should be Gen.G favored with the fact that this Gwen in a side lane is going to be so difficult to deal with. Gen.G looking for an opportunity now. Teleport to the back of the pit here as the Poppycopter is getting channeled. It's going to miss though, and this is going to be an honest 5v5. Stolen away by Peanut. They collect the first Mountain Drake. Moonlight Vigil does connect. Chovy looking for an opportunity, but already Peanut's being taken down. The Devour utilized perfectly. Guma grabs another kill for himself. And Storin, he was in the mid lane uh, that entire time. And Peanut did his job before he fell down. Yeah, Doran and Zayus both fighting, trying to get to the fights. Like, I go. No, you go. No, I go. <laughs> uh, neither of them end up joining it. And Genji trade two kills, but do pick up a Mountain Drake. Yeah, it was heartbreaking as that fight kicked off. Delight ended up going over the wall, gets spotted by the pink that had cleared out his vision initially. And then he ends up having to reroute himself back into uh, where the rest of the team was. But just a decent fight from T1. I was a little bit nervous for Gumiyushi as Chovy came over that wall. I was like, all right, well, goodbye to your AD carry. But unfortunately, they just don't have the follow-up Radiant position there. You can see Pays is trying to make his way down to the rest of the team. Oh, actually, interrupt by yeah, Zayas. Yeah, was the, the interruption. Uh, really, really nice there to make sure that they couldn't actually get through. But here, 
This is where the engage comes through, but look at Pace, he can't actually follow up on Taguma. And imagine if Gwen is already here. Yes, the Cyan Ultimate is there, but the amount of damage I think would have been the big turning point. Instead, the churn from T1 on Peanut, really, really nice. And the Pace and Chovy just have to get out of the pit, make sure that they're safe. And if Zayas doesn't find that interrupt, I think Genji win that fight. Yeah, very cleanly done here from uh, Zayas to make sure that that Gwen was not involved. She is so much of the win condition here for Genji. T1 recognizing that, playing it out effectively, but still losing out on the Drake, which could actually be big. His steadfast presence a little bit late there from Ona. Not going to stop that grand entrance from getting the CC, but he's a poppy. Not too worried about the whole situation. Still though, drew a lot of members of Gen G up onto the top side, so Faker should get pushed. So now T1 get to re-establish that vision, just having the numbers advantages. Pace clears out mid, and even get to rotate up towards this top side. So Gen G trying to make something happen onto owner, but not quite able to make it work. Well, in goes Peanut, finds a Cyclone onto Faker here. The bear is going to come down as a response. Red and white guns here for Paisy, set up to do some damage as Chovy gets the flash out from Carrier. Still, Paisy looking for that opportunity to auto attack, but everyone is moving too far away from him. So the Ophelio is not going to be able to utilize all of that damage. 3,000 gold currently the lead for T1. Doing pretty well, but a lot of things in favor of Genji as well, especially that Mountain Drake. So not over till it's over, of course. Uh, what we're seeing right now, when we look at the gold as well, as expected, Gumayushi up uh, roughly 2k, given the amount of attention that has been paid to him. Very understandable, but the big difference is T1 have actually been able to utilize Guma being fed, whereas for Gen G, um, Doran has either been focused down, ganked, or in this case, didn't even get to join the fight. Yeah, and as long as that doesn't happen, I think Genji, they can hold on, but they can't actually shove back against T1. And the thing is, you don't even really get to use Doran in a side lane particularly well, because the push is but TP now. Yeah, and Infinity Edge is now done as, okay, Chovy could be in trouble. Does have to flash away from the train, but there are a lot of different problems for him to deal with. He gets knocked up, smacked into the wall, and Faker is going to be able to lock down the kill on his opposite number, T1. Just catching Trovi in a side lane. Genji tried to respond to mid, but not quite able to get onto the tower. And now, here we go. Yep, the Abyssal Dive does come through. Gets a decoy, but not the real peanut. He is going to be able to make it to safety as Doran. Getting himself with the rest of his team. Four versus five, the Baron. Now an option. Started up here for T1. 22 minutes, a little bit late for a T1 Baron, but they'll take it as peanut is still there. They're going to look for a turn as Chovy has teleport available. 10 seconds on him coming back into this fight. T1, they know it. They want to try and get this turn soon, but the knock up on Zayas, he's taking so much damage here from Gen G, oh. but it's a phenomenal ult from Ona, and they will secure the Baron. This guy's Poppy has been absurd this game. And even when Gen G is looking for an opportunity to fight, to actually try and out team fight T1, they're not given it. With the disengage from Ona there, T1 stay cool, calm, and collected. No possible way for Gen G, and now they lost the Baron. They did, and this is, it's just so interesting that it's Owner's Poppy here as well. When Peanut versus Owner was being spoken about a year ago, it was the fact that Peanut was so good on Poppy. And so Owner hadn't yeah. really employed much Poppy play, and this is a complete turnaround from that whole situation. Really impressive here from the T1 jungler. Of course, has played a fair bit of Poppy in the past, but it was never really his signature. And so T1, utilizing that very effectively for now, as they look to push down on the last remaining outer turret here, should be able to easily collect that some more money into the back pocket of Gumushi, who already has three full items complete. This is a very happy Jinx. And he's only gonna get more gold here as well. Reset's only coming through now for Gen G, for Peanut, and for Chovy, so Falling Terror should go, and T1. Hover around trying to see if they can catch anyone who tries to overextend here, and Doran does. Yeah, doesn't have any mist left as the Heroic Charge does push him into the wall. Not looking for the dive just yet is T1 as they bear down on this inner turret. The Siege Minion out of range and is continuing just to lay waste to this turret. Zap, not quite long enough to get rid of Doran, who immediately oh. teleports back to this turret. Gen G, they want to try and fight for this one, but it could be dangerous. Zayas is pretty big for that frontline. Faker also has his Banshee's Veil completed. And the Annie is going to be pretty difficult to deal with as well. Dash can and Annie as well, kind of like. Yeah, I haven't really talked about that yet, but it was, of course, mostly Rod of Ages when we sold the Annie yeah. uh, in playoffs, uh, trying out a different build here, able to more reliably get to some of those backline targets. And T1 with this play, shoving in bot side, getting the teleport from Gen G, and then also setting up for a very free dragon. By the team really too close, we are actually been trading these very, very evenly as Faker. Yeah. 
Two dragons apiece now, but Faker looking for pays. Peanut over the wall, very ready for whatever Faker is about to try. As Pei is moving forward now, as he has some extra teammates waiting in the vicinity. So, T1, Baron has... He's going to wear off very, very soon. And we're going to check out this fight one more time. Look at Ona with the ultimate. And I think Genji do a really good time, right, of making sure that T1 can't get into the pit to rush down this Baron. And once Chovy gets there, they can win this fight. But the moment that that uh, ultimate comes through from, from Ona, there's just nothing you can do. Nope. Uh, no chance. You and like 2 uh, <laughs> I, I don't like their chances <laughs> so much. Um, I have a feeling that that might be a little bit in favor of T1, uh, the risk of sounding a little biased. As T1 now move back towards this river, wanting to retake some control. Three minutes uh, on the Baron, so not exactly under too much pressure to do that just yet. Four minutes on the Mountain Drake. So two apiece, we're fighting for Soul Point next time around. T1 just with so much control of this map. Still do see that Genji keeps looking for the flanger, keeps trying to get Peanut or the Light uh, in a position where they can catch someone off guard. T1 playing very, very carefully, but if someone oversteps, if they pick up a single target, might be able to leverage that into more. I think the free item mark for Pays is one that is going to be really important. Because as you pointed out, I think eventually, once you hit critical mass on the Zephalios, all you need is one good ultimate. Yeah, well, Charmy's going to connect there onto Zayas, but he walks the wrong way. We're going to get a knock-up onto Ono, who does have the Steadfast Presence available. Immediate teleport in response, though, as T1 looking to try and lock down Doran and Delight here. The mist comes through, but Faker is not going to be deterred by that one. He tries to dash his way out, but he gets stunned into the wall. Super Mega Death Rocket's going to pick up the kill. Kumiyushi grabs yet another one as Pays. He's trying to walk this one out, does have to use the Gale Force, but that will be enough to get him to safety as Genji with just two men to try and defend, and they may just lose an inhibitor turret off that. Well, Peanut gets spotted, is on the ward, realizes it very quickly. <laughs> what a Want to highlight there as well, Carrier. Even knowing that Pace has a summoner's the moment he comes up with his dive, ignites the full health of Felion. <laughs> like, get away, this is our <laughs> turret. Yep. He knows the target that he needs to be going for, as Peanut not going to stop any backs with an Ember Strike or anything like that, as we are going to have a full reset here for T1. Oh, that's a Storm Razor coming through from Guma here. Yeah, he just... Have uh, not, I've not seen that item in a really long time. It's been a, a very, very long time. Last time I saw it was solo queue. I haven't actually seen it uh, here in pro, pro Play for quite some time, but just wanting to have as much damage as he possibly can have. Um, not feeling the need for anything defensive or anything like that, especially with a uh, Tom Kench in his back pocket. I think it is, it's also just nice with the slow, right? A lot of what Genji want to do is just leg it at you, so as long as you can well, cut their legs out from underneath them, it'll be a bit easier. So for T1, if you can just get those slows onto like Peanut, onto like Doran, if he's trying to go at you, it just becomes a lot easier. In general, also, as, as uh, non regarding the mist, the entirety of Genji is going to have to walk up to Guma, right? And with Rapid Fire Cannon, you can already poke people out, particularly with how fed he is. If you had a, uh, add a Storm Razor on top of that, one or two bad movements from anyone on Genji that's supposed to flank him, and you gotta back off. Also, like, Kerry is doing his best to be disengaged for a time Genji, yeah. but I think just having something that can slow them up, like Leo Faker to get into range with the Hextech Proto Belt, it's actually a really smart pickup from Guma Yushi. I like it. Well, we'll see how it's going to work out as this game continues. T1 waiting on this Baron, about 12 seconds for that one. Genji in the area as the side lane. Zayas just trying to keep Doran at bay and uh, just needs to kill the minion waves. That is going to be his strategy. Has his Sunfire Cape and Jack shows completed. Yeah. He's a pretty happy so, Scion. So it's two damage items against two damage items. Yeah, no, he's a trade. I have a feeling that, uh, in fact, Zayas might just do more damage. Because uh, Sunfire Cape, as I've learned from Orcs, is just a broken <laughs> item. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've been completely indoctrinated into uh, the church of some like it. Can I just say, from coming from the LPL and Oxford, I was like, I'm so jealous you get Oxford. <laughs> They're like my favorite thing. <laughs> They're so much fun. <laughs> Well, it's all about Abyssal Mask Sunfire Cave now. That is, uh, that is what Orcs is on. Uh, he can uh, let us all know about it uh, during the Anon's death segment after this. But have to see who's going to be able to take this as... OK, that's a Rabbitin's death cap done for Faker. It's pretty big. That's pretty big, uh, pretty big pass spike as far as items are concerned. This Annie feeling dangerous at this point in time. 204 just quietly here for uh, T1's mid laner. Just feeling very, very good. One upside for Genji, they do now have Lord Dominic's regard, right? So if Pace can actually uh, 
get in a position where he can auto Zeus or Owner, get a little bit of time. He will be doing an incredible amount of damage to them. But without the fights I've played out thus far, I don't really know if he's going to get the opportunity because T1 is either peeling away or they're making sure to use a Poppy Ultimate to guarantee a favorite fight. And I think T1, as you can see here, have actually been doing a really good job at, like when it comes to setting up two objectives. Like that was the thing I was kind of talking about earlier was like Gen G had been so good traditionally, but T1 have kind of given themselves an opportunity where Pace hasn't been able to get into these fights properly because of the way that they've been trying to fight over the pit or over walls, and T1 have just been able to use the range advantage really well. So now Doran will just clear out some of the vision alongside Delight, but pushing mid means that a lot of T1 can re-establish themselves on that top side. And again, Delight is just on, he's on a journey. He doesn't know oh, where yeah. yet, but, but if he can find the golden route to the uh, T1 backline, Maybe there's still a shot for Gen G. Five and a half K gold disadvantage. It's not insurmountable, but unless you get a really good angle, it's going to be very tough. Yeah, it feels like Gen G still have a lot of ground to make up uh, against T1. As Doran's going to dash away from the zap. Charm is going to go wide here. There's a fair bit of poke damage coming down here as T1 just move up this mid lane. They get control and they can just back away towards this Baron. We've seen them do this so, so many times. Gen.G knows exactly what T1's game plan is. There just aren't a lot of great options into it right now is from what we're seeing. So wanting to get some vision onto the Baron and they find out that T1 have just lied in wait for a moment, but they'll start it up now. It's Delight moving in, Carrier just trying to be that brick wall as T1 ready for the turn at a moment's notice. The Baron down to 50%, Gen.G on the clock for this one. Flame Chompers come forward. Delight has already pre-popped the ultimate, and the Baron is just going to get melted. Peanut taken down extremely low already. It's a fantastic cyclone as they get knocked into the wall. Zayus going down extremely low. Trovi trying to get some work done. Not quite enough um, being found there with the ultimate from Ona, but still, look at Kumuyu. She's just a raid boss. He's gigantic in this game. And T1, they've got the Baron. They've already got what they wanted. Also there, uh, Peanut getting ignited at the beginning means that he can't try to go for like a flash decoy steal. So there is no opportunity to try and get to that Baron. There's no opportunity to try and force a 50-50 flip. And instead, T1 get everything that they wanted. Maybe no hope to hold on to the base as well. T1 stepping up with Baron now as Gen G. They're trying to get themselves back in position, but this inhibitor is gone. Feeling a little bit like checkmate here, gentlemen. As T1, they will take the inhibitor turret and inhibitor very, very quickly. And T1 now just looking to get that reset, spend these piles of gold. 8,000 gold is the lead for the red side team. Looking now to close this one out, Genji, just not a lot of options. Uh, and it really is remarkable because if you took away nameplates and you showed me this matchup in the LCK and told me it was these two teams, you'd think that it would be the other way around. Right, you'd think it'd be Gen G playing the composition where they're trying to play it slow, they're trying to front to back, and T1 that is trying to go for this more pick, aggressive forward style. Uh, not the case. No, not happening this time around. T1 sticking with what has been working for them in their most recent series instead of what we've learned from history. The train going to leave the station here as Isaiah is going for a little bit of a jog. And the Faker going to join him up there towards that top side already. A bit of a back to come through from Doran, but he is going to cancel that. And T1, oh dear, Doran, you're going to have to leg it as quickly as you possibly can. Uh-oh. Uh, but Owner is looking for that opportunity, and it's very difficult to immune the Poppy. The Buckler does come forward. He's just trying to buy that time. There's a heroic charge. Great knock up there. And the Mist is going to come through, but Doran is not going to get taken down just yet. Decent Charm going to come forward, and there's the Lifesteal working out here for the Gwen. Pays now, very, very close to danger. He does have to use the Cleanse, but it will be enough to save him from the first onslaught. Great Charm there from Chovy defensively, but Pays is still in danger. Peanut trying to help him out as Tibbers is going to move back, needs to lick his wounds just a little bit as Peanut down excruciatingly low, and Gen G, yeah, they don't lose anyone, but they will lose the majority of their base. I mean, that's the top lane tower now gone, inhibitor follow, and with minions streaming in, T1 are so strong, Kumayushi, it's one take auto. a pop shot. Yeah, no, it is uh, so dangerous, this Storm Razor Jinx doing so much work here as they dive forward, Ona is exceptionally low, he does eventually go down, but it's in trade for the Rakan so far. They're looking for another one, Faker getting taken down low, Pace still alive, still at full health, as Zayus yes, is going to be his first target, the Devourer does come forward, Pace, is he going to look for it, is he going to look for the ultimate heal. No, he's not going to do it. Not going to go for it. Still had 
his flash available but no moonlight vigil and did not want to move too far forward that's no jungler now for dragon though this actually gives genji an opportunity to delay at least the dragon soul coming through for t1 and a seven the elemental, elemental, elemental game yeah <laughs> this, could, see it. this could actually be like super good for genji and he's buying a bit of time now i still think t1 Definitely in the driver's seat here. You can see that basically every time they face up on a bit of more of an even footing, T1 have been able to take it, but at least getting this opportunity for Genji is huge. Oh, with uh, T1 already back at the pit, though, I think the most you can get here as Gen G is an opportunity to maybe get a 50 50, right? Try and flip it as owner is running down the mid lane. Yeah, Peanuts clone is just uh, gonna get stunned up momentarily. Uh, Faker didn't invest too much. He's going to be able to charge that one up once more very, very quickly. Ona moving on in now as T1 set up five versus five. Looking to spot Gen G as they try and go for this little steal. Mountain Soul devastating for Gen G if it does come forward. Doran gets over the wall, puts down the mist as Ona jumps inside with him. Gen G going to have to look for a way to try and start this fight now, but immediately Chovy is going to get rocketed out of this fight. Speaking of rockets, that one's going to go wide, but T1 have gotten their health bars low enough as it is going to be the Mountain Soul secured. Peanut is going to get taken down a little bit late on the steal attempt. And now Battle Dance is going to get to light to relative safety, but I don't know how safe they are as the grand exit here going to be utilized by the Rakan. But Pays, that's the wrong direction. They may have juked them for the moment as they look for the backs, but uh, yeah, not going to get fooled by that one. But still, Owner is going to take a lot of damage and just goes down. Okay, they can just look for it one more time. Back. Uh, yeah, they're going to have to try and get back because instead, T1 are just going to look to win the game. Um, the old uh, owner for Nexus trade gonna work out here as Pace. Gonna get yet another kill. They're gonna start the back yet again. Gumuchi, you need to hit this Nexus as they are going to spawn relatively soon. But no, he was under no real pressure. He just needs to turn and get the last few autos and T1 will take game one. An incredible start in game one for T1. The fact that they're able to get so much control so early on that bottom side and again, this composition that's built around Guma Yushi, we've seen it before and it looks absolutely exceptional in the hands of T1. Want to highlight as well that uh, one of the big pressure points that a lot of teams have gone for, right, if you are focusing towards that bot side, is the top lane. But as we saw, the Scion did fall behind early, which generally doesn't matter. Into Gwen, it can be a problem. But then with Doran also being shut down early, not being allowed to snowball, because he was sitting on double CS with like 60 against 30. He was stacking a call. But then after the repeated ganks, I think Zayus was able to just get back into the game. And then when we got to the straight up 5v5s, it was impossible to play out. And I like the idea coming through from Doran, where it's like, hey, look, if we can try and match this suicide zombie on the bot side, maybe we can make something work. But I mean, it's not really the case, right? You end up with the two kills. And from then, the Jinx, who already had a call, is accelerated. And she's getting played and she's getting Rift Herald, and it was just too much for them to handle. Even a couple of times where Chovy did get access to the back line, there was just no real follow-up to deal with Kamushi. Yeah, I think it was the snowball being controlled a little bit too much, but that is enough from us here for game number one. Let's.